come in and thanks for this great society and Fred, I'm really going to miss seeing your, your great paintings. You want to get your microphone on? The last time I did this, there was not all these wires and stuff. It's just, I'll probably fall over. Okay. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, when I was going to uh, ask to do this, I was thinking about um, how to make storms and how to think about them because we're working on flat surfaces. And I thought about um, if anybody's ever done uh, shadow puppet theater, has anybody in here ever done that? You use cellophane and you use mylar in colors and you create layers in the back of a giant sheet of transparent uh, or um, misty mylar. And according, when you look at it from the audience's side, it all comes together as one picture. But when you're behind the scenes, there's layers and layers of cellophane and uh, mylar and color and that's how you create this three-dimensional world behind the, the what you're seeing on the two-dimensional surface. I think as an artist when you're trying to create skies or atmospheric effects you're doing that in your mind. You're creating that puppet theater and that behind the stage layering that when you see it in a two-dimensional picture you're still seeing the transient layers of smoke and clouds and light. So you have to think about it in terms of that and think about your surface in terms of that and the textures that you want to create in order to have visual effects of weather because you're really painting wind and light and clouds that change every 30 seconds. So think about that when you want to start your painting, um, what are you going to put on the surface and how are you going to build that up three-dimensionally to give those effects. And I was a printmaker for years um, and I think I tend to think about uh, pastel painting as a printmaker in layers, texture, surface, building that up. So I brought the, a lot, like way too much stuff. And, um, <laughs> as usual. I brought this because this and the, on the surface it's, it's three dimensional. It's almost like a relief. But it's all pastel for the most part. And there's some gypsum in there and there's some um, your, a lot of pumice, different layers of pumice and um, also powdered gypsums in there and I use matte medium in a, in a spray bottle to seal it down. So I didn't put glass on top of this but it's pretty sealed with the matte medium and the water. But I'll show you what I did. But if you want to come up later afterwards you can see that there's a, a lot, the surface on this is like a relief map. It's really thick. And so is the one over there under glass. So, and this one is more um, traditional, and I'll start out with that method, where you put a ground down, and then I do a gouache underpainting, and put the pastel on top. That's the simplest method that I use. And I usually do that for things like clouds and um, storms coming in. But then when you get to more serious weather, like hurricanes and tornadoes, I, I, I branch out into other materials. <laughs> anyway. No, that's not going to work. I'm so, I work too big. That's the trouble. It's not easy to bring in stuff. So what I'm going to do first is make a ground. And I'm sure, how many of you use the turpinoid pastel ground? Raise your hand. Probably a lot of people, because mainly because 
and Deborah Secord did it. <laughs> Everybody took her glass. So this is just the gouache underpainting on top of a ground that I, that I made with pastel and turpentine. And this is just going to be a simple sunset sky painting. So I'm not going to do any more stuff to this, but just put pastel on top. This one is the underpainting for a tornado. And I use, I want it to reticulate like that. When you spill coffee on a countertop and it reticulates, I want that surface underneath of my pastel because I want it to shine through and give me those, those layers. So um, I'll show you different things I use to make that happen on this surface. I, the only surface I've ever found that it works on, well, a couple really, are gessoed, sanded, masonite, um, Kitty Wallace paper, uh, any sanded paper that you use. It won't work on a, on a um, like Canson or a flat surface paper. It will not do that for you. But you can make your own surfaces too. And so I brought a tornado in today to, to do finally. And then I just I brought this in. This is another like um, storm. And I'll underdo the underpainting for you for that one. Because I just start out with the pencil drawing. And if you use those graphite pencils, the uh, number sixes and eights that are pure graphite, and do your drawing in that and use water on top, it'll start your reticulation process. The lead in it, when it dries on that surface, it'll start making patterns that are really fun. But you got to go with it. You can't try to control it. That's the one thing. Okay, so for those of you who have never made one of these, I just start out with gator board and have it dry mounted, um, Kitty Wallace paper. Uh, if you need to have dry mounting done, um, Mike Osborne is a great resource in town, um, and his phone number is 268-5301. <laughs> it's like written when I die, that'll be my last thought. And um, it, he will do bunches for you, he'll do huge pieces for you, and he's incredibly reasonable. So, um, I used to use Rembrandt. I now use a better grade to do my uh, color, put lay down my pastel, because I'm not having much luck with Rembrandts anymore, because I think they put too much gum arabic in them, and, and the wax kind of repels my pastel. I don't know. But you choose a color that's going to be a medium ground for you, and um, kind of the medium color in your painting that's going to tie your painting together. Okay. Um, so, and you don't want to press very hard, and you can leave parts of the paper showing, because you don't want to fill in the whole sanded surface. And you can use two colors, three colors, half your board, one color, a half another. Um, if you're going to put, maybe you want mountains in there, you can put another color in for the mountains and control it with a paintbrush. But today, we're just going to concentrate on textures. So. so you just get about that much, and you can mix your own custom color, what you want your ground to be. You don't have to be stuck with something that you bought that way. You can custom it and make it what you want it to be. And I just use terpenoid usually, but I didn't have any, so odorless mineral spirits works fine. And you want to hold the cap on. Oh, that's right, you can see me. <laughs> this, is, this is really newfangled stuff up here. It's just, okay. So you, you kind of dribble it on. You don't want to um, pour it or it'll wash all of your color off. And if you're unhappy with your color, you can wash your color off the same way. I, uh, oh, okay. I like to use Bounty, but Brawny work just as well. <laughs> They're cheaper. <laughs> 
and you just, you don't want to rub it off, but you cover your surface and you let that dry. And out in the sun it'll take, oh, five minutes or so. Okay, and then you can take your wash and start your underpainting. If you decide that you want to build up a surface, I brought a lot of things today that I use. And you can probably come up with a lot more because mainly I just play and whatever's left over from workshops or class or whatever, I just take home and I'll use and a lot of times I'll just find stuff <coughs> to use. So here are some of the things that I use. Um, I use the uh, the powder gypsum and it comes in different grades. I use graphite. Um, just a little dabble do you on this because you can use it like powder, the powder, graphite, like pencil. Um, I use different grades of pumice and a lot of times I've been using the acrylic ground for pastels and then mixing more heavy pumice in there. Um, I just happen to have coarse pumice gel and I'll show you I just roll parts on there and then put other things in. Um, I use coffee a lot to paint underneath because it reticulates really well and you can throw coffee grounds in there and it'll stick to your paper and that's how I get smoke. <laughs> and this I, I used in printmaking and I've been using it for years in pastel and it works really well. It's Touche Wash. It's T-U-S-C-H-E and it is you can get it at um, Tackage down on South Broadway, or you can order it from the internet. Tackage is far cheaper. There's corns that I found. Stones, crayons works just as well, and it's a quarter of the price. Um, and in, in lithography, you want to repel, the whole idea is water is repelled by grease. So touche wash is used to make drawings and wash drawings in lithography and different gradations. And you paint on a stone or a plate and then you etch it with acid. And the acid goes around all the little particles of grease that are laying on top of the surface of the stone. So that's, I thought, why wouldn't that work with pastel, sand, and paper? Because you have the same um, condition. You have sanded particles and then this grease goes down in there and the water goes on top so the grease will stay. And it takes a long time to dry it. It lays on the surface, dries very slowly and floats down. And that's how you get all those patterns. But you can't ever control your patterns. You kind of got to go with what you get. And I mix wash with this a lot too. I also use, um, pigments, pearlized pigments, gold, copper, silver. It's really fun, especially if you're doing water. That's how I did the river, and it works really, really nice for rocks on the sandias, and you can mix it with water and put it on your surface, too. Um, another two pigments that I like to use are just a raw sienna and burnt sienna for um, let's see, red ochre, you know, they're fun to work with too. And at Artisans, or you can order them online, just raw pigments, and just put them in with your paint or your surface and let it dry before you put your pastel on top. Um, if you mix matte medium and water, um, I would say like uh, one third water to two thirds matte medium in a spray bottle, and after you put your pigment and graphite and all down, you need to spray it with the matte medium and let it dry so that your pastel, it's like a, a growth or something, so that your pastel won't pick up that graphite and your pigments and mix in and get all muddy. You want to create another surface on top of it. So let's just start. So say I want to use, I'll put down this pumice gel on, and I, you know, and you can mix it all on paper plates and um, 
spoons and just wash out your little rollers, it works fine. And if I, I didn't have any plain matte medium today, but you can mix, this is, has a lot more matte medium in it. And then, um, so I'm going to cover my surface, part of my surface with this. And you can use um, rub sponge brushes too, you know, to create that. I know like Margie Lucena and uh, Paul, you use a surface a lot, but you make your own. I mean, you can make your own. I just brought this for convenience sake, because if you're going to make prepared surfaces, you usually do a whole lot and just get them done. Could you pull in a little bit more towards you so that we can Sure. So. Is your surface still wet? Right now? Oh, this is a different board. It would be. My, yeah. This is just drying. You, if you dry that indoors, you should probably wait an hour or two for it to dry if you don't put it out in the sun. And you have to be really careful, too, because your board will warp if you leave it out in the sun too long. So, especially in the summer, <laughs> you can go outside and they'll all be like this. <laughs> because the Shoot arrows from <laughs> Yeah, I know. So, oh, you got that. All right. So, you can just play and build up your surface. This, what is that you're putting on there now? Um, this is gypsum. Oh. And you can... Um, this works really good for like beaches, um, the foregrounds, and canyon pictures, roads. Uh, I should have brought a trash can. Um, yeah. So that's going to dry in there. Then you can use, like if when I talked about the pigment, you can get roll over it with all different kinds of objects. You can use spoons, rollers, carve it in there, make a custom surface. This works really, really, really well for the foregrounds. You have to basically know what you're writing down on there. You do. Well, sort of. But, uh, you know, you're going to have a, thank you, you're going to have a sketch and you're going to, be helpful. yeah, that's great, you're going to have a sketch and you're going to know pretty much what your, your subject is and you're going to already have thought about the divisions of your planes and where your, your, um, your subject's going to be. So if you're doing this, you're going to have a road come in and, or you're, uh, uh, if you want to, like Paul does the sandias, or you do, say, abacu, and you do the rocks, and you know that that's the part where the rocks are going to be. Okay, you know that already. So let that dry, and once it dries, you've got your bottle with your matte medium, and I'll just pretend this has a matte medium. And then you just spray the surface, and you let that dry, and then you work on top of it. You know, so it works really, really well, especially if you're doing tornadoes, hurricanes. That's how I got the, um, that big hurricane down there, that like giant dust devil. The bands of white in there have this underneath of them. So say you decide, I don't like this or I don't want this, you can just scrape it off or wipe it out or wipe out parts. And you can actually form your rocks Okay, so you can probably think a lot of things you could do with this right now. And you can like print other parts, pick it up and print it and make your surface again. You're not worried about breathing in the dust? You don't wear a mask or anything? No. Well, <laughs> just don't inhale. <laughs> you can wear a mask, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is pumice. 
that was this is I that was um, gypsum. This is pumice, and I used pigment in between. And um, you can just like that could be the center of your tornado coming up. So you start to think about things in relief. So um, then let's do the touche wash. Are there any questions? Any questions? So, um, yeah. I, this is back in layup. Are you dry mounting always on gator board or is some of that masonite? You can use masonite. But you're using gator board. Gator board. Because I'm seeing it's correct. The one on the floor is brown. So I guess I. Oh, that's just craft gator. It comes in white or brown or black. Yeah. Um, I use gator just because it's really light, but masonite works just as well. But you're, you're not dry mounting paper to the masonite. You're just no. forming your ground and making your surface on the Right. Masonite, we did that in class where you sand and you put down the surface and sand again. It's on the gator. And Mike Osborne's also a great resource for the gator. Um, you can order it through him, or you can order it through another company, ABC, and they'll deliver it. And it's, I think it's $48 for a 4 by 8 foot sheet. That's right. Yeah. And eighth inch and quarter inch. Right. And it goes a long way. I mean, you can make a lot of work out of that. So, and it's great if you're doing plein air, because it's really light. So you can just stack them up and take them with you. Um, I did have wash up here in tubes. Oh, here we go. Okay, so let's put some touche wash and gouache together and um, let it run down in and dry. And when that's dry, I'll show you what the coffee will do. And you can also, sometimes I'll add a little bit of watercolor in, like I did with the, that big tornado, I added watercolor in with that, and a little bit more color, and then cover over it. So by the time you start your pastel, you have a lot. You already have your value structure, your composition, and a lot of your, your uh, surface effects finished. So, How long so, is your average preparation person? Three days. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> no, it doesn't take very long. Really? No, like I'll do, yesterday I did three underpaintings like the cloud and the surfaces. I did the tornado and that yesterday and two little ones and then for my work next week. So it doesn't, it, 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 it's really fast. It may be the, the big ones take about an hour, hour and a half to, you know, put your book tape on. And, and it's just, so this you can reuse and reuse. You can put it back in what you don't use of your touche wash, okay? And, oh shoot, and, and they have a litho crayons that you, that basically are touche that you can buy and shave, use shavings, um, you can also uh, draw with them and use water on top of your pastel surface. Uh, they come in different gradations, different hardnesses, just like drawing pencils do. And they're called litho crayons. And they sell those at Tackage too, or um, Artisans doesn't have very many lithography uh, supplies. Well, Artisans doesn't have... Can you move that microphone up? He's, he's adjusting the volume. Could you connect it right at your collar? Yeah. Is that better? No. Put it on the front of your <laughs> Hold on. So closer. Is that better? Yes. Hang on. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> 
Okay, so you don't want to use a lot of this because the more you use, the less it will reticulate because it is grease and it'll, it'll pile up and get hard like a crayon. It's basically like a crayon, but a really greasy crayon. And you can buy litho crayons at um, a Tackage and you can buy them, I'm pretty sure, at Artisans. And they come in different grades, just like regular pencils do. Now, a lot of people in lithography will use distilled water for this because they don't want the mineral deposits to affect how the stone will um, take the grease because a lot of times it's uh, transient and it will not stay on your stone, especially when you, you uh, etch it with acid. But I've never found any problem with pastel, so I use regular tap water. Uh, my tap water is from the well, so it doesn't have any chemicals in it, so you might want to use water that you buy in a bottled water without chlorine in it all, because I don't know what the interaction would be chemically with all that. So, you can puddle it. And just add your water and let it run. You can dump it on there. Add your water and puddle it for big swaths that you need for sky formations, for ground, for mud. This works great with snow scenes. Because <coughs> you let it dry and you've got all this wonderful mud with lots of texture. You can, if you've ever done watercolor, you know that your spray bottle is like one of your main tools. You can let it dry, let it drip. You can control it a lot more. I'm just trying to let you see the effects that you can get with this. And then say you'd like some more color in there. You can put a little bit more. Um, another thing that I've done, that especially with this tornado back here, and I didn't bring a mat knife with me. Um, take a, I don't know, I don't know if this will work. Take a mat knife and get yourself powdered pastel in there. Oh good, it's working. And that's how I did all this in the tornado. Because it's, it's pure pigment. It's, well not, you know, it's got some binders. But, you know, why go to artisans and buy bottles when you've already spent thousands on sticks of pastel? <laughs> so do you see how this could work for sand and... The, the, the pastel that you're dropping on there now will stick to the... Mm -hmm. It totally will. And if you spray that with a matte medium and let it dry, it'll, it won't mix in with anything else. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't mix in at all anyway because it's just adheres to the surface. So that's uh, some techniques that I use in my storms. And I really love, I, I, I encourage you to play and find out new things you can use um, to try to uh, do some special effects and try to get the effects of wind and uh, mudslides and sand and hurricanes. And because I think the biggest danger in pastel is you get mud really fast because you're trying to make wind happen and you just keep putting more and more pastel down and pretty soon you, you can't manipulate anymore and you don't have any light coming through the back and you don't have those layers that you need of light and wind and atmosphere to make your painting look real. Does that make sense? Because um, one time, did anyone ever know Nat Kernell? He was a pastelist. He worked in Old Town and 
I was really young, I don't know, 19, I was working in a gallery there and he was one of our gallery artists and he came in and, and he said, he said, you know, when you're doing pastel, you're really painting the distance between you and the mountain. You're painting that, the air. You're not painting the mountain. In the west, you're painting the distance and the atmospheric fear between you and the mountain. And I've always thought that that was a great way to describe it because we have so much dust in the air and changing all those different colors like the sandias, I think, are the hardest thing to paint in the world because they aren't really a color. They're like layers of color, rocks on the back, and they're just really difficult. Paul does a great job. So just let it dry and then, oh, well, I'll show you this up. Wow. Okay, so can you see the reticulation and the patterning in there? Okay. Let's see. If you go closer over to that one, you can see it better. So now is the part where you cover it all up. <laughs> I was going to paint that, but I think you already understand what I'm talking about. One step backward, you t mentioned coffee. How did you ever start using coffee? Um, because coffee reticulates the same way touche does. Oh, I see. So I thought, might as well try it. And um, I used coffee on here for all the brown. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I use French roast. Maybe that is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, I go to the um, National Weather Service at a storm site, <laughs> and I, I like do composites of pictures, and because um, I mean I'm, I've never I've seen a couple little tiny tornadoes, but I'm not going to stand up. <laughs> But I have thought of signing up for those storm watchers. That would be really cool. Chasers. Storm chasers. That's it. Yeah, I'll take the trash can. Yeah. A whole new meeting to plan area. It's funny. I'll just put this down here and let you dry it. Now you might say that's a mess. And why in the world would I mess up all my paper? And, and you might have a few, you know, in the beginning, you're going to waste some paper and surfaces. But then you, you learn. You get a catalog, kind of a Rolodex in your head of, I want to do this so I know if I do this, that'll do that. You know, so then you know where to pick and choose your techniques to build those surfaces, and you can use them in parts of your painting. So. But you, you know, you just gotta be willing to waste things. <laughs> so, so start out with cheap pastels. Don't use the good stuff. So. Hi, but what are you using now that Kitty Wallace paper is not available? Um, well, I heard she was going to make it again and. Come to IAPS, I don't know. No, she's not going to be at IAPS this year. She's not, so she she's not. a Facebook post. There. So she's not going to make her paper. Um, well, I, I have been using the other paper that just you art. I've been using you art. And then um, it doesn't quite act the same way, so I've been messing around with making another surface on top of it that would be more like Wallace. But it's, it's almost the same. And then I got the other premier pastel paper, and I've been working on that too. Do but you alter that surface as well? No, I'm just still met. I'm still playing with it because I, I haven't run out of Wallace paper yet. Thank you, God. So um, I'm trying to find something that will act the same way. So and you are and premier seem to be fine with both. You know, they're just not as sandy as 
as Kitty's paper. So, okay. I also use my iPad a lot. I don't know if anyone else does. A couple of my students started doing that and I just <coughs> fell in love with it. It's a great way to paint. You can, you can enlarge a part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's almost like being outside because you have the light from the back. Okay, here, here are my pictures. And I can't say enough good things about the National Weather Service site. <laughs> they have cool stuff. <laughs> so. so, the great thing about the storm, um, especially the tornadoes, is by the time you get to this point, you don't have a whole lot left to do. You, know, you, you don't have a lot of pastel work left to do. You basically have one or two layers and you're finished. So the time that you spend with the underpainting is really time that you're doing the pastel. So, and, and if you take longer than like two hours to do this, or an hour and a half, it, it's be overworked, I think. I, and then you can put water on top. Anyway, let's get started. So, so I like to work upside down. And I really have no um, rhyme or reason to my pastel, but the. So, all you need to do then is I call it glazing. Is you glaze over those all those layers that you made, and you decide how much that you want to cover up and how much you want to leave. Okay, so like in this painting, can you see the red under the, cl uh, yes. under the yes. cloud? Okay, that's where you decide, I'm not going to cover that. I'm going to leave that, that surface. It's going to hold a lot. And a lot of times if I want to have more uh, smoke come or more uh, uh, more of a cloud. I'll take the spray bottle, re-wet it, and uh, do it again. And I'll show you that. Let's see. Why upside down? Um, for one thing, the dust falls, especially for the sky, falls down. It's not going to fall over your ground and mix in. And I I think it's easier to see your composition in your negative and positive space. And I'll turn it sideways and right side, but I always start upside down. Because that way you're not looking at things in terms of a tornado or a river or a tree. You're looking at it in terms of space and shape. So I usually work with a um, row first, and then I'll come in later with the soft stuff. This is soft just because I wanted to show you like, how you can have snow come down. So do you see how you can have like a veil? Um, like clouds that will come in, like just very simply just washing over that, um, dusting over it with your pastel. It doesn't take much at all. And you can uh, blend it with a harder pastel like the Giroux. So if that were a cloud, coming in, it 
then all of a sudden you have missed. See? And you know what? Hardly have anything at all on there. So why I brought all these pastels. It's like a security blanket. Just bring more and it'll be better then. <laughs> kind of like throw up yeah <laughs> no I, it's scary it's really scary I remember driving it across country and looking up and seeing them in the distance and looking for somewhere to get into or under or over so there's not a whole lot of pastel on here at all, as you can see, and most of it, most of it took place in the planning stage. You know, it it didn't take place here. Um, if you do uh, get overworked, if your painting gets too full and overworked, you can blow it off, and um, I suggest canned air or a compressor. <laughs> But don't worry about the dust. <laughs> 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 what for? Actually, that's right. Um, I, I, our, our compressor is this huge thing because my husband does construction. It's in the barn, so he's right. <laughs> it's just here outside. But you're right. You should use a mask, and you should be. Yeah, I just have to put a little disclaimer on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try this at all. <laughs> 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 I'm not professional Do I try to make it different? Yeah. yeah. I'm conscious of that. Oh, yes. Especially when you're doing that that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. The, 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 absolutely. I would never do that to a sky unless, you know, you were having a tornado. <laughs> but if, or like a hurricane. <laughs> if you're just doing fat cumulus clouds on a sunny day. I don't put anything on the surface. That's what... That's why I brought that in, because that's going to be a big golden sunset cloud. So I wouldn't put anything in that. But I'll do it on the bottom when I get to the bottom, like for the farm fields and the dirt and all that. Mm -hmm. It'll work. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure either, we should have an other disclaimer about the National Weather Service photos, um, but since I use a composite of photos, I always thought it wouldn't matter. Um, and I have several friends who do um, photo paintings, John Bosnio, Bosnia, Bosnio, and um, in California, he's a great painter. 
but he does tons of tornadoes. And he's the one who turned me on to the National Weather Service because I was like, where do you get those tornadoes from? He has like dinosaurs in front of him and stuff like that. And he's the National Weather Service, you know, if you change them enough, they're not going to give you any trouble. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, are there any questions? No? Just keep drawing? Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Oh, okay. Stage, what would that be? All right, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So much. All right, let me get a little bit more on there. And I'll do that on this side. So this way you'll have two sides to compare. And I'll just keep messing with this until I get the detail that I want. And keep it pretty fluid. And I blend with my hand. Um, save the soft stuff for last, you know. And you can see that it's starting to appear, you know, come out of there. And if you want more reticulation on this side, you need to have a good amount of pastel on there. Um, you can't, that's not enough. So. Ah. It works well to um, to work with compliments, so your ground's a yellow, and you, you know, I chose this because the, the clouds for the most part were purple, so you have the compliments going for you. I'll just leave part of it, um, the surfaces that I've made, so it comes through and you have more light in it that way. So, if you're going to do water, you can put some in, and then you can go back in and make even more smoke. It's okay. Okay, there we go. Now, do you see how that's working for you now? And you have to just, does any, how many of you do watercolor in here? You know how in watercolor you let, you put a lot of water down and then you, you just let it run and you pray to the art god. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can see the surface run and then back up and then I'll work on top of that again. So let that dry and then work back on top. Okay, that way you don't get it muddy either. You can keep building and building. Uh-huh. You ever use alcohol? That would work really well because it reticulates. And it would work with the um, touche wash too. And like with coffee, you can drink a little lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I, I don't know how if it would be greasy and how much pastel it would take on top of that. 
that's the only thing, but try it. I know I I don't know if it would sink into the surface. Actually, I think I did do that on the. Um, yeah. I have tried alcohol, and it sinks into the surface and sets your color really well, but it has a little bit of a grease on top, so it it resists your pastel afterwards. So if you want to set it finally to just stay there and not go anywhere, alcohol is a good thing to do. Yeah. So would you ever use a matte medium between your pastel layers like you did on the ground? Um, it, it will resist your pastel I, I, and you, it's kind of Paul should answer that one. I use clear gesso instead of matte medium. You can dilute it the same way. Uh, Liquitex makes clear gesso. Do, can, can you work in layers on top of the yeah, gesso? Yeah, just get a spray bottle or an airbrush or something. So clear gesso. Okay. Yeah, that would... It'll one. keep some tooth with your tooth. That, that's true. You would have your tooth you, and, and wouldn't you have that plasticity of that medium. Yeah. Um, these are all my secrets. So <laughs> this is about all I have for now. Um, I am teaching classes. If you ever are interested in taking a class, um, you're welcome to sign my book. And um, you teach your whole surface preparation in your class. Uh huh. Yeah, and um, we do different subjects, and the for students that I've had in here, you know, storms and trees and mountains, and working class and all. And I will be teaching at the uh, artisans yeah. in July. A class. Will you put your painting upright? Um, yeah, I was at, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> if it starts to drip, you can always just kind of tap the drippy parts and let it dry. And it works really well for clouds too. So you can definitely see your your technique, uh, the way your sky looks on that left hand side. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Will. And you don't have to work a lot at all. It's totally the lazy method of pastel painting. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so yeah. Do you always pretty much do the complementary round with, uh, or, or do you mix that? Well, no. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking. Um, you just have to think of oh, like skies. I always I have this theory that's kind of half baked, but it's you have phthalo skies or it's, um, and cerulean skies versus ultramarine skies. So if you're doing your ultramarine sky, I usually use try to use kind of a um, purpley red magenta ground, and if you're using a thalo ultra, uh, ultramarine sky, I, I use a yellow orange. So those would be compliments. So you, well, not really. Close. Yeah, close. Pretty, pretty close. Yeah. And with the storms, I'll usually use a really warm, warm background because you want that light to come through because behind the storm there's usually a really nice sky coming through. Okay. Okay, thanks so much.